Welcome to another edition of the Dodgers Nation Roundtable. This is episode 16. Right over here, I got Mr. Klimpasias. That is at RealFRG on the tweeter. To my left, Mr. Brooke Smith. That is at BookMe3 on Twitter and Instagram. My name is Eric Gila. You can find me at E-E-U-L-A-U. <laughs> Normally, we debate and discuss all the hot topics surrounding the Dodgers. Cherry deadline just happened. But after it was announced, the great Vin Scully passed away on Tuesday night at age 24. We're going to take the time to age 94. We're going to take the time to honor the Dodgers legend, a baseball icon, the voice of summer, the baseball poet laureate, the one and only Vin Scully. Vin Scully is a person who transcended baseball and sports altogether with his approach to his craft, his professionalism, and his kindness to players, managers, executives, fans, and fellow broadcasters. It's hard to encapsulate someone like Vin Scully in just one memory, but Clint, what is your favorite Vin Scully memory. I don't know if you have any specific Vin Scully one memories because you could you could sure you could look at any one particular call any one particular moment think about you know where you were watching a game um uh, you know what he said in that moment the, how many times just being here in the office each day that we are here and how many times we emulate a Vin Scully call just BSing around the office if anything I would say it it's it's the whole idea of, 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 you know, watching a game with your friend. Even if he didn't know you were there, you're watching a baseball game with your friend. His name was Vin Scully, and he was there to guide you through learning the game. He was there to guide you through a baseball game through. I mean, I love that we're seeing, um, you know, John Boy and all these people putting, putting up the clips of, of him calling, like, calling the action during a fight, like during the Zach Greinke, <laughs> Yasiel Puig fight with the Padres, like people now getting to see what we got to experience back in the day. It's a, it's amazing, but that's my long winded answer to your question. Yeah, for me, I mean, we can always point to the calls and there's so many iconic ones and things like that. And obviously he did it for so very long. He was going to be involved in pretty big moments. Right. But for me, I think the thing that drew me in immediately about Vin was his ability to, you know, look at the fans in the stands. And he was obviously like so drawn to the fans, like everything about it, like was just, that was baseball for him. And for him to be able to have a cutaway to a fan and just be able to make up a backstory about them, you know, to, to talk about that person and probably <laughs> perfectly, perfectly encapsulate who that person was, honestly, just by like, look at this person at a Dodger game, look at this kid enjoying cotton candy. I remember one of the first times I had ever like seen that from him like really paid attention to it. I remember it was just a kid with an ice cream, yeah. you know, at a game. Yeah. There's a little girl with a curl. Right. Yeah. And him talking about it. I was just like, how do you make like a backstory like that? So interesting from just one little pan across the, mm -hmm. the, the, the audience, the fans, you know, and it, that's just what he was. He made everything about baseball interesting to people who loved him and appreciated him, which was everybody. Yeah. I think you guys all touched on it. Like it's maybe it's not one memory. It's this collection. It's this massive span of his entire portfolio, what he meant to the sport, what he meant to Dodgers fans, helping usher in baseball to Southern California after the Dodgers move. So yeah, maybe, you know, maybe it is just the whole collection, the, the brevity, the whole list of everything that he did. I mean, the guy read off a grocery store list and it sounded <laughs> incredible. I mean, that is just a little sliver into just how amazing he was at what he did. He was the ultimate master of his craft. And there was a fan Fantastic amount of coverage last night mm, on Sportsnet yeah. LA. They brought Great job, on John Hartung for for you. You're never like I heard heard a lot of people to to cut you off for a second. You heard a lot of people say nobody was ready, but you've been expecting. You've been prepared. You can never be ready for it to happen. And just all the coverage that the outpouring. I saw somebody tweet last night like this is the best Twitter has ever been, and it, it's great. You know, you're sad, but it's great to start sharing these memories again. Yeah, Nick Coletti had a great comment on Twitter. Of, you know, there's not enough space on Twitter to really yeah. to really fill up everything and everything that just Vin Scully meant to Dodgers fans. But there was a ton of fantastic coverage on Sportsnet LA. It's going rolling throughout Wednesday as well on AM 570, 710. I mean, you just drive around, flip to the radio. Everyone, even national programs that yeah. don't even cover baseball, right. are talking about this incredible man. But <clears throat> what tribute or you know interview with a former player that's happened in the last you know 24 hours since we heard the devastating news? Which has really resonated with you and you, you can pick a couple if you'd like Brooke, but which one has really resonated with you? Yeah, for me, you know, obviously when Clayton Kershaw posted earlier today, it was just one of those things where you have two icons of a franchise and obviously Kershaw hasn't been here nearly as long as Vin was here, but for him to like post those pictures with 
then his young kids, like very young kids who we've now seen grown up and like become older kids while he's also become a very old dad in <laughs> LA um, to post those pictures with Vin and just be reminded that like, wow, like two incredible sports icons that have just changed the like entire landscape of LA sports for us. But for me, it was the Evan Phillips post. Like, he, you know, he posted on his Instagram and, mm -hmm. and he had said, you know, it's just a picture of Vin. It says, you have the best seat in the house now, Vin. We'll make you proud. And I was like, but dang, man, that guy, I don't know why it got to me so much, but I was like, ooh, <laughs> right, in, right the in the heart. Right in the feels. Yeah, from Evan Phillips of all people, man. Yeah. I, I enjoyed, um, I mean, it's not my, it wasn't my favorite, but I did enjoy uh, uh, Austin Barnes talking last night because you do, I think it is kind of easy to forget, you know, all these pe all these players are the same as us growing up. They're watching these, they're watching the game, they're watching their heroes, they're listening to whatever Vin was for them. And, you know, he's a Riverside boy. He grew up listening to Vin, of course. And, you know, you heard a lot of, of folks talking about how this was just, it was the noise of summer. That's what you heard in your house, uh, you know, day in, day out. Uh, definitely during the summer, obviously, because they don't play in the, in the winter. But to answer the question, uh, I don't remember if it was Rick Monday or Charlie Steiner, but they were talking about the home run after, you know, Culberson's home run, the walk-off, mm -hmm. you know, the celebrate on schedule. And they go to San Francisco. Vin's only uh, uh, away call of that year. Calls his final three games to San Francisco. Culberson has the bat. He has it in the sanitary sock. And he's <laughs> like, do you think you can get Vin to sign it? And Vin was excited about that. That's just great. I mean, because like they were talking about Vin, you have to be a baseball fan to keep doing that for 67 years watching it for 80 years living to be 94 it, it it's it's i don't know it's beautiful it's wonderful and it's also sad at the same time for me it was oral hershiser i think because you could tell that they had a you know they had a really nice lineup of former dodgers broadcasters yep. on sports in la and i i kind of hit me with you know I, I saw the news like everyone else and it you know it doesn't really hit you it takes some time to to really settle in there but Earl Hershiser remarked how, you know, he was like, yeah, I was ready to do this until I started hearing everyone else talk about it. And you mm -hmm. could tell that in the first 30 seconds of the clip, Oral's great. He's locked in. And then his voice starts to crack. He's getting teary eyed, telling all these stories. I mean, it was like a seven and a half minute clip, at least what they put on Sportsnet LA. But for me, that's what it really was is, you know, hey, this was really easy to think to think about talking about before I actually have to start talking about it. So I think especially for a player like Hershiser and all those players who, you know, Vin called so many of his incredible yeah. career moments in Dodgers blue. Obviously, 1988, you know, the season that made Oral Hershiser, but that was the one, that was the one that really, really hit it home for me. But I mean, you kind of touched on the Culberson call; that is a signature call. But yeah. he has, I mean, he has countless calls. But for you guys, you can do one, you can do two, you can do ten, whatever you need to get out there. But what is the your one of your favorite Vin Scully calls? I'll go. I mean, the four plus one game, you can you can never live that down. Yeah. I mean, that's just the team was middling leading up to that point. And uh, you didn't really know. I mean, and I mean, for years, you know, sure, they made it to the postseason in 2004, was not a very good team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, Jose Lima won the only game, rest Lima in peace, time. Lima time. Uh, but the four plus one game, like, like, I don't know, I don't know, Vin sort of put the team on his back in a way, or fans on his back as we're uh, navigating through that. And, you know, would you believe it? Four home runs, all this, it, it's, it's, uh, that's, I don't know. I'm going to keep that one brief. That's my favorite call. I don't know if it's the greatest call, but that one just immediately stands out for me. Nomar Whittier boy. He's the guy who hits the walk off, the excitement, and knowing when to let the crowd tell the story. It's exciting. It's fun. Baseball. Yeah, for me, I mean, there's obviously so many iconic calls. I wanted to pick one when I was alive because obviously there's so many like before I was born or even before I became a Dodger fan that I just didn't really, you don't, you don't stumble upon them until yeah. you start doing YouTube searches and things like that or just watching highlight reels and things. Um, but that Kershaw no hitter, I mean, like you said, knowing when to provide moments of commentary, knowing yeah. when to talk, knowing when to let the crowd do the work <clears> for you. I mean, there is no one in the history of baseball, maybe the history of sports that has done a better job of that. That space in between that final pitch and him talking about the fact that he had just thrown a no hitter. I mean, that was just like every emotion that like Dodger fans could feel at one time. Mm -hmm. Being so happy for this guy who has been the face of our franchise, who has carried our team, who has put it put everything on his shoulders for so long to reach that like accomplishment and then have Vin just be like, There it is, I'm gonna sit back. And I <laughs> yeah. can you can almost like feel him just sit back. 
yes. and just stop. You especially, know, maybe take off the headphones and just sit there for a second. Especially in that era, knowing how dominant Kershaw was and be like, he's done it. Right. Because you knew it was going to happen one of these days. You felt the magic of that game, and you, we all felt the magic of that game because Vinny felt the magic of that game. That was, I think, probably his last no-hitter called because that was two years before his retirement. Mm -hmm. He's a dude who called 21 no-hitters. He understood how to punch a no hitter. Three perfect games, I think, too. Three perfect games. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible the way he was able to do two that. Two and two. The Harvey King. <laughs> I think two. One the, strike away. And you guys talk about letting the moment breathe. There's so many great examples of that, and you guys touched on them. But also, Hank Aaron breaking yeah. Babe Ruth's all time home run record. You know, Vince Scully reportedly actually got up from the booth, turned around, put his back to the crowd, and just let the crowd do the work. He, he did jump back in, but I think there's a full, I forget how long it was, but there is a solid chunk of time of that clip mm -hmm. of Hank Aaron breaking the record. And then also his ability to very carefully, very delicately note that, you know, an African-American man in the deep South just yeah. broke a hallowed record that was hit by a white baseball player. And yeah, I think his, his ability cheated. to handle that moment, I think is just, just incredible. And there's very few people that, that could have done that. So I think I saw the stat also for the, the Gibby, of course, Gibby is going to be always the most iconic right. call uh, especially for Dodger fans, having hear, heard it for 32 years. Uh, I think the number was it was 61 seconds or 67 seconds before, uh, between just the, just the crowd freaking out when, in a year that has been so improbable, <laughs> like for that, like that, the, that amount of space. You don't get away with that. You, <laughs> no, we can't just show up here and say nothing and you guys would be okay with this. Yeah, I, I wasn't alive for it, but I think the a great moment that isn't about his you know masterful ability to let the crowd do the work for him is Bill Buckner missing that ground ball because Vin Scully's voice is the exact pitch, the exact excitement that every fan felt of. It's behind the bag, and that was what everyone was yep. thinking in that moment. It's such a routine ground ball. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't alive for it, but for yeah. me, that is one of my favorite signature Vin Scully calls, and it's not even a Dodger game. It's very much like a holy shit moment for yeah. Vince yeah. too, just as much as it was for everybody else. Right, just the sure. composure, also, how many baseball games that guy saw, yeah. and it's like, oh, it's a routine out and he, game. Vin so is bad. also a guy who knew Buckner, came right. up with the Dodger. He's like, this is a good defender. How's that happen? Right. Behind the bag, right. Buckner. <laughs> Here comes night, and the Mets win it. So finally, we'll forego you know, any more structured questions. I'm just going to give each of you guys the opportunity to, to take the floor and whatever you feel you would like to say about Vince Scully to all of our Dodgers Nation fans and really just, you know, Say whatever you need to say about the passing of a legend and, you know, one of an L.A. icon, a sports icon, a broadcasting icon, and a guy that meant a lot to a lot of people. So, Brooke, you can, the floor is yours. Yeah. I mean, there were so many things that were special about Vince Scully. I mean, I said it yesterday where I was like, calling a dude a legend, like, it doesn't even feel right. Like, it doesn't even feel good enough. Like, he was a titan. Like, he was royalty. He was so much larger than life. And yet, at the same time, like... He was your grandpa, you know, he was, he <laughs> yeah. was your family member. He was a, he was your friend that you watched a game with. Like you said, I mean, you do it for that long and to be that invested in it still and to care that deeply about mm -hmm. that sport. I mean, I hope to be, a, have a 10th of that passion in my life for anything. The fact that he was able to bridge, like not a generation to a generation, he was able to bridge a generation to a generation <laughs> to a generation and now into another generation. Like what he was able to do connected all of us. Yeah, I, I started watching baseball um, when I was like seven ish years old. I did it on my own. I grew up without a dad. I found baseball completely on my own. And the only reason I found the Dodgers was because they were free. They were on KCAL <laughs> nine, KCAL and that's how I became a Dodger fan. And that was the first voice that I heard uh, for a baseball game. My whole family were Angel fans, and uh, I was like, I'm a Dodger fan. Like this is awesome. And it's, it's weird to think that when he retired, it was it was just like a, such a solemn moment of being like, that's the only voice that I've ever known to yeah. like connect with, with Dodger games, with the sport that I love, with the team that I love. He just did so many things right, you know? And it's, it's, it's not often that you find that in the world today. <laughs> like somebody that when you think of him, you're just like, that was a great man. Like top to bottom, that was just yeah. a great man. From everything that I know about him, a great man. So everything that he did, all the work that he put into it, I just don't think it'll ever be matched. There will never be another like him. There just won't be. And I think that's cool. I think that's a good thing, you know? Yeah. And, and to add to that, Joe Davis, he did a phenomenal job handling a moment that no matter how ready yeah. you think you are for that moment, you can't be ready for that. And, no. and he brought everyone in to be like, we're going to feel this together because mm -hmm. we are going to feel this. We're going to feel this. Yeah. And he and knew it's okay. when to stop making it about baseball, understanding the moment, you know, him and Jessica Mendoza facing the camera 
uh, at just the right time. It just, it, yeah. Props to giving props to Joe Davis because that was perfect. Was by, by the way, yeah. pioneer, icon, a couple more words I believe you can use for, for sure. Mr. Vincent Edward Scully. For me, uh, yeah, I'm sure everybody got the messages. You got text, people who know what baseball, what Vin meant to you. I had uh, somebody message me like, hey, you doing all right? You know, um, I, I said that the way I, I immediately spun it in my head, it's, you know, Vin was family. You, you don't always get to pick your family. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I said, we spent every summer together talking baseball it was a one sided conversation, but it was still perfect. Um, <clears throat> another one was, uh, you know, it, it's so weird feeling so much love for somebody, you know, so well that has never even met you. <laughs> that's a, that's what it kind of was with Vin. You know, he was yeah. there, he was your guy. He was whatever he needed, whatever you needed him to be. He was there every single summer and into the fall. And it was great. Vin taught me baseball. I mean, there's no other way around it. Vin taught me everything I know about the sport. And, you know, that's that's crazy. Like somebody that you didn't know you existed. We almost got the chance to meet him. Yeah. I didn't. But, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things where it's just somebody that you'll never forget. You know, I'll be hopefully 94 years old talking about <laughs> Vin Scully and people, are like, my, my great grandkids or whatever, like, who the hell are you talking about? I'm like, yeah. you're going to know. <laughs> and, and the humility of the man. I mean, you look at when they dedicated the, you know, Changed the name, Vin Scully Avenue. He's like, in a couple of years, he's kids are, who's Vin Scully? He's like, you know, it, it's he he didn't like any of it. He just wanted to be there, watch baseball, and talk about baseball to to us. Uh, you know, his final game at home. You know, I I needed more, needed you more than you ever needed me. That's I mean, it's a lie. We all uh, we all needed Vin <laughs> as uh, as we were coming up and and doing this. Um, I mean, yeah, there's so many things you could say, so many moments as you're talking, as as this guy's talking. You know, things just come in out of mind. But what's what's your what is Vin to you, Mister Eeu Leu? I mean, to, to try to sum him up, like we're all trying to do, and we're all doing it in, our, in the best way we can, is is impossible. I mean, there's just no way to to really characterize someone of like this, like a like a titan, as Brooke said, is is a great a great. When you have Bob Costas and Al Michaels giving you your roses after you pass, I mean, that tells you all you need to yeah. know. Those are two of the biggest names, two of the best names. Um, I th I think the connective tissue, um, like from generation to generation whether it's your father, your mother, your uncle, your grandfather, your friend who lives on the other side of the country and you guys would, would tune in to you know, listen to Vin Scully together. That's what's really important to me. And, and you know, going to the game with my dad who would still brought some crappy free radio from a Giants giveaway <laughs> that we went to. It, I think it was called Pac Bell at the time. And it was, we got it because Andre Galarraga hit the home run and we were in the Andres Galarraga section. Shout out to the big cap. And my dad brought that stupid <laughs> Giants logoed radio as a diehard Dodgers fan to the game until that thing broke just to listen to Vin Scully. Like bringing the giant D batteries to listen to his old silver radio oh, with us yes. in the stands. Like, you know, they talk about, oh, everyone brought their transistor radio. It's like, no, like, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but, you know, my dad brought that freaking radio to every game. And, you know, you go through your <laughs> shithead teenage years, you're like, it's so lame you bring the radio. And then now that I'm older, not wiser, but I realize why he <laughs> did that. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go to the Charlie Colperson game um, with my friend who had season tickets, which I'm, I'll always be very thankful of. And, you know, you have so many memories. I had to, like, text him today. I was like, we were at that game together, right? Because it's just, like, out-of-body experience is probably yeah. too far of a word. But, like, I just couldn't really, like, I was like, we were at that game. He's like, yeah, I were at the game. And he sent me a photo of the ticket. I was like, right, cool, I was there. But <laughs> that was really cool just to see Vin and the way he brought it all in and just how humble he was. And you could tell he didn't want to do any of it. Yeah. But he knew oh, yeah. that the fans needed it mm -hmm. more than he did. So I will say he was right about that. But he was dead wrong about us him needing us more than we needed him. And that just wasn't true at all. And, you know, he called a lot of perfect games. That guy threw 67 years worth of perfect games. Yeah, no like kidding. never a bad call, never a missed call. The evolution of the game, the players changed, the coaches changed, the managers changed, the logos changed, the stadium changed. <laughs> and he didn't because he didn't need to because he was perfect. So that's what I'll always remember about Vin. And unless you guys have anything else uh, to close up. For, for me, I just, he's one of those guys, you know, we've been doing this now. Brooke and I have been around Dodgers Nation since 2018. And, you know, one of the first people, me and uh, my old co-host, Kevin, we interviewed uh, Fred Clare, former Dodger GM. And, like, I knew if I, if I push this guy, I can get Vin. But Vin doesn't want that. And I respect this man. I love this man too much to bother him. I had one close encounter with Vin doing this 2020. I just uh, I, I posted it on my uh, my Instagram earlier today. 
Uh, it was 2019. They were talking about the 2020 renovations and the All Star Game coming to LA, and he was there. He was still spry. He was still perfectly Vin. And uh, <laughs> there was a moment afterwards. We're wrapping up our camera equipment, and he's walking right at me. And I'm like, Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? But he's talking to Charlie. He's talking to an old friend, Charlie Steiner, and they've been there. And Charlie talked about it on the post game show um, <clears throat> with with uh, John Hartung. Thousands of dinners, countless you know times spent together talking baseball, talking life, talking whatever. So these are two guys reconnecting. He had been retired for a couple of years. I'm not going to bother these these guys. All I said was, "Good to see you, Vin. Thank you." And I walked right by. <laughs> that was that was the the extent of my my Vin Scully one on one, and it was awesome. Yeah, I already I already love the guy. And then someone, uh, an old assistant producer from a radio program, was retelling the story on Twitter about um, you know having a calling Vin for an interview. Vin was in the grocery store and Vin Scully stepped out and I already loved the guy, but apparently Vin said he was very nervous because he didn't want to leave for two or three minutes because his <laughs> wife doesn't know how to pick the perfect avocado. And as a Vin Scully lover and an avocado lover, that just made me love him <laughs> even more. So thank you guys for the time. Uh, really appreciate it. These are, these are never fun episodes to do, but I appreciate you guys sharing your thoughts, your feelings, speaking from the heart about a Dodgers legend, an icon, a Titan, every other noun you want to throw in there, they're all true. Um, so thank you, RIP Vin. Thank you for everything, and thank you for watching.